This is no MacBook Scallywags. This is an Acer. Um, the customer on this essentially said, you know, he's in the middle of like playing a game. The thing shuts off. Poof. Doesn't work anymore. No charge. Um, you know, no, no nothing. Um, really that sort of behavior for, you know, just from the description, this is generally going to be a board issue and it's probably a short circuit on uh, you know, something, probably the main rail, uh, which is, you know, what this, what this has. Um, luckily on this, there is an actual board view available for this so we can see what this stuff uh, is um, now some lines like just for I don't know you're measuring around like a CPU inductor or something they should kind of be low resistance um, we don't have anything you know worrisome on the CPU coils which is cool it's all you know 50 30 blah 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 and then this line right here point two ohms to ground right there on the, on the board view um, this board, you know, there's like kind of like thermal paste everywhere. I don't know if it was, it was done messy in the factory. Uh, the customer said he hadn't had any work done on it before, but then I see kind of like this sort of crapola. Uh, whatever, we're going to clean the whole thing anyway. Um, and this is maybe some, you know, after aftershock of, uh, of liquid damage or something like that. It might just be like flux stains, but... This sort of thing isn't uh, not a great sign. Um, really, though, I don't see anything that looks super crazy. I kind of want to just look at the board first because the part that's failing might uh, just uh, you know tell us basically by how it looks. We see a you know cap with a pole blow blown through it or something. Um, I'm not entirely sure if we need to actually inject voltage directly into this line because it's like on the 19 volt DCN more or less. Um, so I'm just going to plug in the charger, pull out the thermal cam, see if I see something getting spicy that maybe gives us a hint. Um, and otherwise we'll send uh, we'll send maybe one volt into that line directly and uh, creep up the voltage. Um, let's see, we're going to plug in our charger. Actually maybe see what the voltage looks like on this. Uh, no point in line. Yeah, so we're just seeing like a pulsing, you know, one millivolt. We're having some minor technical difficulties with the Elgato camera help software. Let me just stop the whole thing again. Nothing. It's getting kind of hot. Definitely not any hmm. this. Okay, we're going to send power directly on that line. Um, the MOSFET might just be getting hot, right, because it just is a thinner wire than whatever is actually causing our problem. So we will put a wire on the line. We will inject the voltage. And we'll see what gets spicy. So I think we found our problem. It's somewhere way on the other side of the board. What's this? Let's see. Oh, cool. There's a nice little hole blown in it. You can see our problem. And let's say. 
And we can just see, you know, immediately it just evaporates that alcohol. Let's see what that cap is. We should be able to find a replacement. Um, actually, I guess I didn't have a schematic for this. So just some other 19 volt line. And this ends up back here. And then that goes through there. That ends up here, and then here, and we're going to go short here, but not uh, on these for some reason. Okay. We're going to move the cap. Work should work after. And get off this wire. Let's see what our line reads now. I'm going to switch to two wire resistance. Now, All right, so now we're getting like 50 million ohms, 30 million. So I think this is working now. So I'm going to clean up some of the wires on this, and then we'll put it back together. And we're also going to put in a 2 terabyte drive. This person wants some more storage for games. We're already taking the whole thing apart, so it's much cheaper to get that new drive in when we're already doing something like this. Um, this is a pretty straightforward board repair. Uh, it's certainly nice to be able to, you know, have the board view file for Windows machine, which is, you know, rare. Uh, the MacBooks, those ones always seem to, you know, fall off the truck, and we can get those. Windows machines, not so much. Uh, generally, pretty good luck with these Acer machines, though. There are, um, I've seen a couple other, like, you know, Predator, Acer, Helios, blah, 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 where we can actually get, um, you know, full board view and schematic, which is certainly helpful, because we can just see what the line is um, without having to... You know, probe around a bunch to kind of guesstimate, or um, yeah, it just you know makes everything more simple. We can see what lines are called, uh, what parts are. You have a schematic, you can get you know part numbers for stuff and see what the values are, and that sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna look for a PDF schematic for this really quick and see what the values are in that cap so we can get a replacement on there. We'll be right back. All right, buddies, uh, we have it working. We had to go do some other things. Uh, we're going to use the part search function on FlexBoardView to find a suitable replacement part. Um, really, this probably would be fine if it wasn't here and there'd be no issue, uh, but we would just rather replace it. So, um, let's see here. So, this is a 10 UF 0603 25 volt. So, we'll use those three kind of strings of data. So, we're going to go to search. We're going to find a part. And we're going to write. 10 UF 0603 25 volt. A little search. Um, and then we're just going to pull a, a part off of uh, some MacBook motherboard, basically. Um, see what pops up. I want to see if there's one where I just have a bunch of donors. There we go. We'll pull it off of uh, A1466. Probably got about a million of these. Uh, right, so right there in between the RAM. This one's used on pp one vs 2 I'm going to go grab a donor board. We'll pull that capacitor and we'll replace it. Right, looks like well, basically all of these guys right here. Are these big boys in the middle. We'll just pull that one. Sure. Go 430 on the airflow. Spin the tracker on. Die off.
Where is this? There it is. Uh, I'm just gonna add some leaded solder on these pads. Replacement capacitor. There we go. New shiny on there. Uh, I'm gonna kind of do this so I can point the hot air away. Um, then essentially we're gonna, you know, just clean off um, the board and, and repaste it, reassemble it. We'll stress test it. I generally just like to run like uh, Cinebench R23 single core while running the GPU uh, stress test on uh, firmware. You know, just have stuff like Core Temp open. Uh, I just want to make sure it's not gonna like crash or the same thing's not gonna happen again because maybe the short was caused by something else or something like that. Probably more just uh, you know bad luck, basically random electrical problem. I didn't see any. Serious signs of you know liquid damage or you know uh, other uh, types of uh, screwery on the on the board. So I think this guy just got unlucky, unfortunately. Um, but he will have a working laptop, and he just to save his data, he can he can game on on this Acer Predator. So we're gonna clean this up, and then we'll be back once we're done testing. All right. So the laptop does live. Uh, we have our little stress testing thumb drive in there. Uh, we're gonna run single core on Cinebench. We're gonna run GPU stress test on Furmark. Uh, this is a laptop, so well, the temperatures are always gonna be kind of terrible because it's a laptop. Um, I really just want to see, um, you know, I just, I just want to let the stress test run for, uh, you know, about 10 minutes basically. We want to make sure it's not working. Uh, I'm probably going to recommend this guy. Uh, well, one thing I noticed actually, there's just like a dead zone on the LCD right here. There's a dark spot. Might be kind of hard to see. Um, but uh, we want to, uh, uh, you know, when we're doing the board repair, any parts are for parts cost. Like we added a two terabyte drive. Uh, I noticed his memory is, I mean, just we're doing this right now and his background apps and there's like Riot, Vanguard and Overwolf and stuff like that. All those things do eat up sort of... Um, resources in the background, so it might actually be nice to put 32 gigs of RAM in this laptop. Um, probably help with some kind of like frame time consistency in games. Um, and then um, also if he wants to replace this LCD, it's, or it's probably you know 60 or 70 bucks. You can probably get it here um, you know, Tuesday or something like that. So uh, today is Saturday. Uh, so we, we should be able to get that pretty quick. Same thing with you know some, some newer memory modules, just kind of you know, soup it up. Um, basically, but we're going to let this run for, um, you know, 10 minutes. I think we'll be all good. I didn't really see anything else of note. Um, and then we'll give the customer a call and ask them about the um, LCD and the memory, um, essentially. Uh, we'll catch you on the flip, fellas and gals.